Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to my bookshelf tour. So I haven't really done a bookshelf tour in a while. Um, the last one I did was not very descriptive. I don't know how long this one is going to be, um, but I go through the majority of the books. I talk about them. That's, that's what we're doing here. I hope you enjoy. So this is the shelves. We won't discuss my absolute mess of a desk or shelves that I got from Amazon. I don't remember where I got this couch from. And then we have a tortillas tank. We have along these walls, we just have some anime. So then we come over to my shelves and this is them. So for this first shelf, we have Six of Crows, which I usually have backwards like this. We have the Fairy Loot edition of um, City of Dusk. I have the Fairy Loot edition of the Atlas Six with the sprayed edges like that. We then have the Night Circus and the Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. We have these two candles and this skull. And then we have this Fairy Loot edition of the Book of Night by Holly Black. I have read all of the books on this shelf. I didn't finish City of Dusk. I absolutely love the Atlas Six. Six of Crows is obviously a, a beloved book. And then Erin Morgenstern, I love everything I've ever read by her, which just is those two. And then The Book of Night, I wasn't the biggest fan of. So on this shelf kind of starts my Cassandra Clare collection. So the first book on this shelf is actually um, Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. This is what the hardcover looks like. And then we have my hardcovers of the Shadowhunter series. So we have Clockwork Prince and Princess. Unfortunately, I don't have the first one in hardcover. We have the Bane Chronicles. We then, of course, have the Last Hours. Infernal Devices is like my favorite, but the Last Hours, depending on how the third book goes, could end up being a new favorite. Um, but I love these two covers. I think um, Dark Artifices on, her covers just got exceptional. So, and then this is my 2020 bullet journal um, that I just obviously have opened. We then have the remainder of my Cassandra Clare books in hardback. We have City of Angels, City of Lost Souls, City of Heavenly Fire, Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, Queen of Air and Darkness. We then have Legendborn, which I absolutely adored. It's probably one of the last YA fantasies that I've actually truly enjoyed. We then have All the Ugly and Wonderful Things, which people seem to mistake this for a romance and it's really not. Uh, and I definitely didn't read it as a romance, but I thought it was a good book. We have Dig by A.S. King, which I didn't love. We have one of the final books in the Vampire Academy series, which I don't have like the, the biggest nostalgia for it like a lot of people do, but I enjoy it. We have Black Sun, one of my favorite fantasies of the year that it came out. We have Star Sight, a YA sci-fi that I didn't super love. And then we are on the last top shelf. So we have Hollow Pox, which is part of the Morgan Crow series, a middle grade series that's absolutely delightful. We have these alt um, hardcover, hardcover dust jackets of the Twilight series. Um, and then we have my black paperbacks. So we have The Poet X, Birthday Shot and Will You Be Mine by Rosie Adams, one of my favorite contemporary romance authors. We of course have the second book in the Six of Crows duology. We have City of Brass, which is one of my favorite fantasy series. This is the first book. The clip was messed up because my AC is right above where I was filming about the black box and the remaster by Breonna Hale. And of course I have to show them off. We have Hello Stranger by Lisa Kleypas. We have A. Stephanie Lawrence. We then have Serpent and Dove. Neon Gods by Katie Robert. We are back at the other end and then you're at a weird angle because of just how I have to set it up. So we have the two unread books, two books that I haven't read in the Mistborn trilogy. We have The Hero of Ages and The Will of Ascension, which is backwards. We have Station Eleven, which I enjoyed. We have the Lord of the Rings series, which again is not in correct order. Um, we have The Hobbit and the Trilogy. We have The Book Thief, one of my favorite historical fictions. We of course have Clockwork Angel and this edition is marked up and absolutely battered and one of my sticky notes fell out, uh, which is a pink one, which is sad, but this is like absolutely marked up um, and I love it. 
I want to get a hardcover and then just keep this edition because it's the first edition that I read of this and it's one of my favorite series. So we have the, we have My Dark Vanessa. This is a really, really hard hitting contemporary that I loved. We have The Turn of the Key, which is one of the only Ruth Wares I've ever loved. We have The Poppy War, which I'm excited to continue the fantasy series. The Glass Castle, which is actually like this memoir story of kids who were raised by um, addicts. And it's pretty interesting. We have The Guinevere Deception, which was a very sad YA King Arthur retelling. And the reason I say it's sad is because it was vastly, it was so disappointing. We have Gods and Monsters, which is part of the Serpent and Dove series. I personally feel like the direction that the series went was fantastic and I loved it. We have this dust jacket for a court of mist and fury, um, and arguably the only good <laughs> book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. So then we have Deeper, which is a novella in like to, it's a prologue novella to Go Deep, which is one of my favorite romances. Um, and I really enjoyed the prologue. It's their marriage, their wedding. We have Midnight Desires, which was part of a vintage historical romance eBay haul. We have arguably one of my favorite YA fantasy series, Cruel Prince, Wicked King, Queen of Nothing. We have Black Girl Unlimited, which is one of my all-time favorite books. It's a part memoir, part surrealist story about a girl enduring trauma, really. We have The Air He Breathes, which is a romance between a widow and a widower. And um, it's it's just deeply emotional and really beautiful. I love Brittany C. Cherry. We then have the Hello Lovely Box edition of Dark Notes. I love this. I love pianos. I love all that. So I think that's a gorgeous addition. We then have Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I gave it three stars. I'm excited to continue the series. We have It Ends With Us, the first and last Colleen Hoover book I will ever read. We have part of a book in the Maiden Lane series by Elizabeth Hoyt. We then have the Hello Lovely Box edition of The Hitman by Katrina Jackson. We have Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson, one of my favorite books of 2020. We have Married by Morning and Tempt Me at Twilight by Lisa Kleypas. We have Nevernight by Jay Kristoff, The Taste of Innocent Innocence by Stephanie Lawrence, The Pursuit by Joanna Lindsay, A Dance with Dragons, part of the Ice and Fire series. So then we have Addicted to You by Kristen and Becky, Becca Ritchie. We have East of Eden by John Steinbeck. As you can see, my edition is absolutely destroyed. I would love to get a new edition and just put this away somewhere because it's the only edition that I've ever read and I really love this book. So. We then have The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Moving over into my pink books, we have um, Crazy Stupid Bromance, which I read the first one in this series and I didn't enjoy it at all. Um, but I knew that when this cover came out, I had to have it. So I wanted to have it on my shelves. I don't know if we'll ever read it, but that we have it. We have Tool of, Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey, arguably one of the worst books in the series, but still good. A, another vintage, probably my favorite vintage. I love the pink and the flowers. We have another Maiden Lane book. We have Tempest by Beverly Jenkins. We have the Hello Lovely Box version of Tutoring the Player. We have Devil in Disguise, Worth Any Price, Marrying Winterborn, and Cold Hearted Rake by Lisa Kleypas. We have Midnight Treasure, Tame the Wild Heart, we have Slay, which is a um, YA story about a girl who starts a VR and it gets into some trouble. We have the Hello Lovely Box edition of Waking Olivia. I'm very excited to get to this one. I've heard fantastic things about this author and this one. We have Much To Do About Love, Rose Haven. We have an alt dust jacket of A Court of Thorns and Roses. All Scott and Bothered by Kerrigan Byrne. I have the 10th anniversary edition of Clockwork Angel. We have The Fire Between High and Low by Brittany C. Cherry. It's part of the same series that The Air He Breathes is in. I think I like them about equally. I had issues more so with this one than with the other one, but I think they're still really good. We have Rebecca, one of my favorite thrillers. Wicked Saints, which was moderately okay, 
but I don't like the author. Two books in the Maiden Lane series by Elizabeth Hoyt. We have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which is my favorite YA thriller series. And then we have Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is about a girl whose best friend goes missing and no one else is like investigating it. It's really, really good. So we have a couple books by Beverly Jenkins. We have a Lisa Kleypas, a Stephanie Lawrence. We have The House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass, Blood and Honey, one of my favorite sequels, A Feast of Crows by George R. 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 Martin, part of the Ice and Fire series, The Devil's Thief, which is part of the Last Magician series, A Good Marriage, which was a thriller that I didn't super enjoy, and then Mexican Gothic, which is a horror that I really loved. We have the special, the Hello Lovely Box special edition of A Lady of Works Grave Manor, which is a polyamorous monster romance that I didn't really love. We have Sacrifice, which is a vampire polyamorous, which I did enjoy. We have The Sundown Motel, which is a th one of my favorite thrillers of 2020, I think, when I read it. We have With the Fire on High, which this is the naked hardcover. We have The Twelve Dates of Christmas, which is a lovely Christmas novella by Rosie Adams. We have Crime and Punishment, and then we have Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin. We have A Court of Silver Flames, which I haven't read and I don't know if I'll ever read, to be honest. We have Another Vintage. We have Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. Fantastic. Go Deep, one of my favorite romances of all time. We have Love Her or Lose Her, which is another one of my favorite romances. It's a marriage in trouble and as you can see by my tabs, I absolutely loved it. I thought um, their relationship was just so beautiful. We have City of Bones and City of Glass. We have Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. This is the Fairy Loot Edition. Those are the sprayed edges. I don't particularly love the naked hardcover, which is why I have the dust jacket on it, which I don't usually have for hardcovers. Um, I don't love it, but I do love, for some reason, the yellow and pink just really works for me. We then have the Kiss Quotient, which is one of the first adult romances that I read and loved it. We have Rain Wind Chronicles, which I haven't read yet, but I'm very excited to get to. We have Let Me Hear a Rhyme, which is a fantastic YA story. We have Devil's Daughter by Lisa Kleypas. We have The Truth About Love by Stephanie Lawrence. A Song Below Water, which is a fantastic YA surreal realist story or realism story. Take a Hint, Danny Brown, which I haven't read yet. The final book in the Davabod trilogy, which I loved. The Gilded Wolves, which is a really good YA fantasy, but I don't remember much about it. We have another one of the vintage that I didn't really love. We have a Nordic King. This is the Hello Lovely Box edition. I don't super love it, but I liked the romance itself. We have several of the Maiden Lane series. We have another Lisa Kleypas. We have the fifth season, which is a fantastic adult fantasy. Not for, like, new people that are new to adult fantasy, but it's really good. The Beast of Extraordinary Circumstance is a really good realism story uh, that I enjoy. This is another one. This is the Court of Wings and Ruin with this dust jacket. We have The Serpent's Curse, which is the one of the books in the Last Magician series. We have The Storm of Swords, which is part of the Ice and Fire series. We have Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. We have It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. We have the Kingdom of Copper, which is the Davabod trilogy, the 10th anniversary edition of City of Bones. We have City of Ash, the two Tessa Dare books, Birthday Girl, the Hello Lovely Box special edition of Credence, the Guest List, and the Great Gatsby. We are on the last row of shelves, really, because the other ones aren't really that filled up. We have Outlander. We have Sea of Ruin, which I absolutely love. I love that indies have like this velvety cover and I think that this cover is really pretty. We have this other vintage. We have City of Girls, which is a fantastic historical fiction about women really like discovering their voice. We have Rush by Brianna Hale. Of course, I have to pull it out, one of my favorite romances of all time. We have a Tessa the Durbervilles, which I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but I read it in high school and absolutely loved it. It was pivotal to my reading. We have, oh, I found the tab. We have a, a Maiden Lane, two Beverly Jenkins, The House in the Cerulean Sea, a Lisa Kleypas, another Lisa Kleypas, another Lisa Kleypas. We have The Unhoney Mooners by Christina Lauren, House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass. 
Game of Thrones by George R.R. R. Martin, and then we have The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. We have another vintage Fabio moment. We have Beloved by Toni Morrison, which I haven't read yet, The Bell Jar, which I love, Opposite of Always, which is like a YA romance-ish about a guy who's trying to figure out how to change course of events that lead to his girlfriend dying. We have The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, Wondersmith, um, part of the Morgan Crow series, Fixer Up, which was okay, The Captive, Captive to the Kiss, which is another vintage, and as is this, Whip Whispers to Me of Love, which I don't super love. <laughs> we then have Disgrace, which we have the Hello Lovely box cover for. I haven't read this yet. We have the Shadowhunters Codex, the Wallflower Rager by Tessa Dare, Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas, We Hunt the Flame by Hyfsa Faisal. We have A Pinch of Magic. We have two Maiden Lane books, and we have White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson, which wasn't everything that I was expecting it to be, but I'm excited to see what she can do in the horror genre. So then we are finishing out our books and getting into my manga. So we have Devil in Spring by Lisa Kleypas, Lady Sophia's Lover by Lisa Kleypas, The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, which is stunning, Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, which is okay. <laughs> we have Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, which is fantastic. Nevermore, um, which is the first book in the Morgan Crow series. We have Batman Year One, Penguin Triumphant, and Batman Two-Face. We have this Avatar, <laughs> the Airbender volume. We have Spy X Family. We have, this is all color, color coordinated, obviously, but I have one through 23 of Full Metal Alchemist. I have this volume of Saga. This is volume two. I have one and two of Fairy Tale. I have A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness which is a graphic novel. I have Helsing Volume 1, Requiem of the Rose King, The Girl from the Other Side, Volume 1 and 2, my Full Metal Alchemist collection, more Full Metal, we have Blood on the Tracks Volume 1 and 2, Saga Volume 1, I have Tokyo Ghoul 1, 2, and 6, I have Yatsuba, Volume 1, Absolute Boyfriend, Volume 1, The Apothecary Diaries, which is so cute, Volume 1. I have Short Cake Cake, Volume 1 and 2. I have I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, which is the complete collection. And then I have Volumes 1 through 33 of One Piece, which is on the other shelf over there. So I hope you enjoyed that little tour of my bookshelves. They are ever-changing. I'm constantly reorganizing them. They'll probably look different depending on what video you watch because some videos I pre-film and they have my old shelves and then I film again a new video and they have these like newer shelves. So my shelves are just forever changing and that's kind of that. So let me know down in the comments your thoughts on my shelves. I would love to hear it. If you don't have anything to say, leave a book stat emoji. I will catch you guys in my next one and thanks so much for watching.